The Denver Nuggets versus the Utah Jazz. And the base of the Wasatch Range Gold Lake City, Utah. Thousands pouring into the Delta Center, attracted by the magic and the mystery of Game 7. Nearly 20,000 fans, once supremely confident their jazz team would advance, now nervously await the start of a game that could end the Utah season. They won better. Young and maturing Denver trying to rewrite the NBA playoff book. Utah winning the first three, the first two impressively. Game three in Denver, and then the Nuggets stir as gold. A one-point win, a double overtime win, and they won when Utah missed the final shot on Thursday night. Oh, my. Welcome aboard, Dick Denver, with Steve Stafford Jones, and congratulations to Rudy Tom Donovan and the Houston Rockets, the winner of this game, will meet the Rockets game one on Monday night. The dream was the man for Houston, and the dream is what Denver is trying to maintain here in Salt Lake. And their big dreamer has been Dikembe Mutombo, and he believes that they can do it one more time. He's averaging six blocks a game. He believes if he has to get ten, they're going to get it done. He is the difference. He's the heart and soul of their defense, and he has the Utah Jazz shooting outside. The youngest team in the league, Denver, the longest shot in the playoffs against Utah, a team that has two of the five first-team NBA, all-NBA members, Carl Malone and John Stockton, but for Carl, it's not been a good week for the Postman. It has been a tough week, and that Carl Malone has gotten into a little confrontation with his owner, Larry Miller, about being off in Game 5, but he said he will shoot everything today. He's going to make all of the big plays. Carl wants to keep the post office open. So here we go. Game 7, will it be Denver or will it be Utah advancing? Well, it's Game 7, and Denver's brought their magic number 7 from the Broncos. The NBA on NBC is brought to you by New Light Ice from Miller, the first, the only ice-brewed, less-filling beer. By the U.S. Army, learn how to get an edge on life. Be all you can be. And by Jeep and Eagle, official vehicles of the NBA. Delta Center in Salt Lake City, ready to rock. And now the introduction of the starting lineups in this decisive game seven. Dan Roberts of the Delta Center. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Delta Center for NBA playoff basketball. This is game number seven of the Western Conference semifinal. Introducing the starting lineup for the Denver Nuggets. Starting at forward and wearing number 26 from Notre Dame, LaFonso Ellis. Starting forward, number 34 and 67 from Georgetown, Reggie Williams. The starting center, number 55 and 72 from Georgetown, Dikembe the Tumbo. On the guard line, wearing number 3 and 61 from Louisiana State, Bakun Abdulno. And a guard, number 23 and 65 from Virginia, Bryant Smith. The Nuggets are coached by Dan Nichols. Assisted by Troy Winslow. And now, ladies and gentlemen, our Utah Jazz.
four Utah Jazz. That's four number 32. That's six nine from Louisiana Tech. The mailman Carl Malone. Thirty-four number 23 and six six from Nepal. Tyrone Corbin. The starting center number 50 and seven feet from Louisville, Nelson Thunder. On the guard line, number 12 and six one. Our trainer, John Sparks, assisted by Terry Clark. that if there's one thing that gives them the edge in the final game of the seven-game series, it's the fatigue factor. While Utah will not admit they've been fatigued down the stretch, the fact remains they won only one fourth quarter this entire series. In the double overtime Tuesday night, they were outscored 15-7. to Then in the fourth quarter on Thursday, they were outscored by 10. I've just spoken with Robert Pack of the Denver Nuggets. He says this is their strategy. Push the ball up the court, even off made baskets by Utah. Force the tempo. And Dan Essel says they'll go with that strategy, even if they're down. They are that convinced that they can come back against a tired Utah Jazz Club down the stretch. Meanwhile, Utah tried to conserve its energy and didn't have a shoot around yesterday. Dick? All right, thank you, Hannah. Meanwhile, across the Rocky Mountains in Denver, Colorado, we understand at McNichols Arena. Look at this. The Denver fans as a group coming out to their home arena to cheer the Nuggets as they uh, hope that this unbelievable season the impossible dream will continue. Can a team that won as a number eight seed for the first time ever against number one, rally from 0-2 down? Can they now be the uh, first to rally from 0-3 down? Robert Pack, just before the tip-off, leaving the court. We don't know what that's about. He was not in the starting lineup. Hornison. Knocked away, and it's off the foot of the Denver Nuggets. Hornets executing crucial in game six. He nearly won it single-handedly and took the final shot from outside that would have tied it had it dropped. Most of the times, you would say, it's critical for the visiting team to get off to a good start. But this afternoon, it's critical for Paul Malone and the Jazz to get off to a big start. Their confidence is sagged after dropping the first three ball games. And uh, the visitors, the Denver Nuggets, they feel like they can play if they're 10 or 12 down. Well, you can see in the starting lineups, they're like a bunch of kids. They are the, by far the youngest team. And they're just uh, romping the park as Abdul Raoul hit the three and Colton Spencer. Then Stockton the other way. Stockton driving the lane. Rebound Reggie Williams. The veteran who kept this series alive with his dramatic shot in game four. Alfonso Ellis. The foul will be on him. Stockton had the defensive position. Top strike for Alfonso Ellis, who's had trouble getting off in the, the first six ball games early. Stockton, who doesn't mind sacrificing his body, throws himself in the way, and uh, they get the first call, but Stockton pays. We're under, we understand now the reason Robert Pack left the floor is needed to uh, use the euphemism. <laughs> He's okay. <laughs> Stockton. Out to the wide open there, man. Carl Malone. He said he's going to have to rub that right arm at the end of this game. He's going to shoot at any chance he gets. Dual Rauf at the other end. Rebound Spencer. Ty Corbin had the big game three a week ago in Denver. Malone, four to nothing. As long as the Nuggets are walking the ball up, the Utah Jazz have control of the ball game. And that's what John Stockton 
Jerry Sloan want to see that gives him a chance to get back in and defend and make Denver a perimeter team. Good defense. Sloan came up with it. Stopped him. It's out of bounds to the Jazz. Last touch by a blue roll. We know Carl Malone came with more than one bullet in his gun today, and uh, he said if he had to fire them all, that's what he's going to do. And this is what Matumbo wants to see, Carl Malone fading away. It's much easier to control Malone and the Jazz when he's playing out on the perimeter. Malone to Stockton. A blue roll from Stockton. Home set cuts through and sits on him. Everything they run is for Carl Malone, and he said yesterday he's going to have his hands on the ball quite a bit. He's going to be able to make some decisions, and uh, Mahmoud Abdul Raouf takes Spencer one. Spencer got him with an elbow. Well, Coming through the lane and then trying to come back in and help out, he takes a little short elbow right in the chin. Talked about walking up the ball versus uh, hurrying it. That'll be the difference in the two guards. Abdul Raouf, more patient. He's more the outside shooter. Pack is the hurry up man. The things that have worked for the Denver Nuggets have been their post up with Reggie Williams, Lafonso Ellis, uh, Dikembe Mutombo. When they are just forced to play outside in, they're not nearly as effective. They've yet to get on the scoreboard. Nearly three minutes gone. Four nothing and uh, whistle. Another elbow, and this might be on Matumbo. It is. Coming through the lane, not much of a shot, but a shot anyway, and Jake, uh, with the intent of getting this seventh game under control in a hurry, uh, he was emphatic with that call. That's right. Open, and the rebound, Matumbo. He's averaging 12 a game in this playoff. Reggie Williams fires way off the mark. And Spencer loses it out of bounds. That's so the Nuggets cold. Right, that's a sign of, of adrenaline right there. That ball was way long. <laughs> These guys are really pumped up, and they're going to have to get a little uh, energy drain here to try to find a mark. And uh, Dan Nissel is uh, calmly working just Kirsty on his sideline. Underneath the Matumbo, and he misses a little tap in that was fouled by Felton Spencer. And so that's his second. This is a good cut to the basket, and Felton Spencer is late and just gets him with that forearm, and that uh, gets Felton Spencer a second personal foul, and the tumble is close to the line, and this forces a big change for Jerry Sloan. No big body inside. Now they come back with post up four to Kimby Matumbo against Tom Chambers, who has been struggling. All of the bench for Utah in the last three games having trouble contributing offensively. Matumbo, not a good free throw shooter, but brilliant when he had to be in game six. And it was his two free throws at the end that secured the victory. First point for the Nuggets comes with 8.46 left in this opening quarter. It's about Denver, and yet they're only down three. So they know that if they can stay close, they certainly still have a chance, as they've had in the last three ball games, to come out the victory. Williams on Hornacek. The pick and roll to Malone. That leaves Chambers over. That hit. Here comes the break, three on three, and Williams slows it up. Lafonso Ellis, way short, gets it back. Abdul Raouf, the stiff. The combo. Abdul Raouf, into the heavy traffic, and Lafonso Ellis travels. Oh, no basket. 0 for 6 are the Nuggets. Four minutes into the game, not a best. Multiple opportunities, and that certainly will make any coach uh, pain with regret that they didn't cash in on an easy scoring opportunity, Ellis realizing that he traveled. 
And it was Stockton leaving his man to Harris, the shooter, Lafonso Ellis, that managed to travel. Stockton out there offensively. Here come the Nuggets. Reggie Williams. They had the numbers but didn't take advantage. Stiff with a strong move has the first basket. 7.41 left in the quarter. A 4-3 game. Meanwhile, Utah not exactly blazing. Well, other than Carl Malone, they haven't been able to get it up and down, so they're going to come back to Carl Malone. Two for eight for the Jazz with two makes by the mailman. Point effect runner not there. Stiff. Stockton almost knocked him away. And he forces the turnover. Stockton reaching from behind. And that's two plays, the little things you don't see in the box score the next morning that uh, Stockton has delivered. Those are the deflections that Jerry Sloan likes. That's true, but Dan Issa would rather see a mistake in the open court and pushing the ball uh, than not have them looking for that aggressive offensive opportunity. Along with the combo. And a whistle. No shot. Alonzo Ellis, and that's his second. Away from the ball, fighting for position. In, in Salt Lake in particular, Lafonso Ellis has had a very, very difficult time getting him into the ball game, getting him foul trouble early, and this ball game is no exception, but his replacement has been a huge thorn in the side of his opponents. Uh, the Sonics remember him well, and so do the Jazz. Now the Jazz fans booing Brian Williams because he's been highly critical of Salt Lake City as a cultural and social experience. Chambers, way strong, Abdul Raouf. shot blocking and the Nuggets ought to be thinking about trying to get that ball to the rim. He is over for three from outside. Timeout. 6.40 left in the opening quarter. Welcome back. So Lake City, Carl Malone has the only two field goals for the Utah Jazz. He says he's ready and he won't be bashful today. If the shot's there for me, I'm not holding back. I'm taking them. So hell, I might go 0 for 20, but I'm shooting them. And, and that's, how, that's how we got here. And I'd be damned if I go out any other way. That's how I'm going out if we have to. So I have a job to do and we're running some plays. I have, I, I, I will have the ball a lot tomorrow. Uh, we've discussed that. And a lot of plays have come through me and, and I have to make decisions off that. Indeed, he is the focal point of the offense for the Utah Jazz. He is carrying him right now. Nobody else can make the shot. They're all afraid of Matumbo. Oh, there's a basket for Hornacek. Goal pending on Matumbo. This one just handleizes Matumbo. It looks like it's going to come off, and he's ready to grab the rebound, and he gets it just as it's on the cylinder, and it's a deuce. 6-3. The Jazz lead it. Abdul Raouf. He's over the floor. Malone with a rebound. He's got a mismatch, and Hornacek wants to try to go against Brian Williams. Did a good job of keeping him outside. Stockton with three on the clock. Again. So both guards, Abdul Raouf and Stockton, nothing for four. Stockton doesn't have the reputation of being a, a big gun from the outside, but should be able to knock down wide open jumpers. And this is kind of a reflection of what went on in game six. Foul on Brian Williams over the back. Hit first. And Abdul Raouf is out and Robert back in. That'll change the whole look for Denver. In that situation, it looked like everybody got to the ball at the same time, but Brian Williams coming from the outside has his first foul, third team. Jay Humphreys in the ball game along with Robert Pat. Humphreys in for Stockton. And it's one of the way off the mark. Matumbo has five rebounds already. And here's the difference. Pack will get it into that offensive end in a hurry. Plus, Pack is very dangerous off the dribble creating penetration. They want to make Tom on play for defense. Let's see if Ryan Williams can do so. It's going to be a travel on Williams. 
Brian Williams dances as he moves both of his feet before he puts the ball down. Denver has five turnovers here early in the ball game, and I, I would say that this first period demonstrates the anxiety and the importance for both teams uh, in the ultimate outcome. Over seven minutes played, we've seen just four field goals, and one was on a goal set, a reach-in foul. Robert Pack. Pack says no, and it looks like he's right. He'll come right in here and tip the ball, but from the angle that Jake O'Donnell saw, looked like he came across the top of the arm. Six to three, a cold start for both sides. Four and a half minutes to go in the quarter, and uh, Malone threw that right into Matumbo. And then the foul on Humphreys trying to stop Robert Pack. First on Humphreys. Carl Malone said he had to make decisions with the ball. This is a very bad one. There's nobody really in the area where he's throwing the ball, and it was a good reaction by Matumbo. And trying to throw it through a pine tree. Lots of limbs here. Now, the play that works well for them with Chambers against Matumbo is Matumbo down on the box. That's where they're going now. That's a three-pointer for Brian Williams. Reggie Williams, excuse me. Reggie hits the three to tie it at six. Four minutes to go, opening quarter. Six for Malone. Teams. The winner to meet the Houston Rockets in the Western Finals, Matumbo. Jump hook not there. Knocked back to Matumbo. Ryan Smith was over in the corner and he was calling for the ball. They didn't see him, so they're going to reset same play, try to drop the ball back into Matumbo and make the defense of the Jazz react. Chambers, double team, and Richie for another three. Tom Chambers. Second release was down court, but Reggie Williams picked him up. Play to Malone. Goal sending on uh, Matumbo. Oh, that was close. If he goes, then he got it with the thumbnail as he's just going across. And if it's a whisper. The, uh, uh, we just got glasses on tell Yeah, me. tough to do. Cut <laughs> your fingernails, uh, Jakembe. 307 left in the opening. Tough call for goaltending. It has to be on its downward flight, and it has to be touched, obviously. And from that angle, is it touched? It doesn't look like it's from that angle, but we'll give you one more look, and you'll see a slight deflection. So. All six eyes of the officials are good today. And, you know, as much as we think that the officials don't see, right on top of that play, and it gives the Jazz a four-point lead. Each team traveling on the offensive end. The Nuggets trail by four, three minutes to go in the quarter. Carl Malone has been the offense of this opening period. They're trying to go through Matumbo and make the defense of the Jazz react because they have Tom Chambers on him. Tumbo. This is the short jumper. Jay Humphreys. Stockton's go on the bench for Utah for a cold start. To Chambers. Hornacek with a pass. ball game is shooting 28 percent got the good ground they post up rodney rogers rookie from wake forest out to robert pack and pack has been instrumental in this incredible playoff season for the nuggets and they get a second chance they shut down the penetration of pack and forced him to go to the weakest part of his game and uh, he likes to get to that rim reggie williams Gets the basket and he is fouled. 
Jeff Hornacek doesn't have enough pressure on him as the passer, and he leads Tom Chambers nice and easy for the hoop. And then Reggie Williams taking advantage of his time to get Hornacek, which he's been able to do in all six games, draws a foul. Williams with six of the Nuggets, nine. Nuggets 11 points, but Utah unable to take advantage. Rodney Rogers off the mark. Reggie Williams gets it and a foul. Tom Malone. How did Gary Sloan spell relief? Like to see somebody else other than Carl Malone shooting the basketball and seeing it go in. Hornacek, who really was hot in the third quarter in game six, comes up with a big shot. You think Rodney Rogers is going to have a lot to say about this afternoon's game with the offensive end? Guys is trying to keep him close right now. Reggie Williams misses the first free throw. And the foul was on Chambers, not Malone. Chambers picked up the foul. One of two for Reggie Williams, a five-point game. Five seconds difference in the clock. Reggie 
Ricky Williams did a good job of controlling Hornacek until the shot and couldn't resist chasing and trying to make a block. On the move, plus shot, and he gets a piece of him right at the end. So Hornacek try to come back with back-to-back -back threes will go to the line. First foul on Williams. Hornacek, who has been deadly from the line in this series, 29 out of 30. Long range here for Reggie Williams looking for the last shot. Nine and a half seconds to go. John Crotty makes an appearance for the Utah Jazz. Humphrey sits down. They don't want him to pick up another personal. They got nine and a half seconds to go before the first quarter comes to a conclusion. So they've flown thinking of protecting, knowing he's got 36 minutes to play. He may have to use all of his guards this afternoon. Hornacek hits the two free throws, a seven-point lead. Dual row to pass. And so ends a glacier-like first quarter for the visitors from Denver. 19-12. It was a great vintage, and Carl Malone was the key to Utah. That's the end of the first. Denver hitting only three for 20, 15 percent in the opening quarter. Let's review the series. Carl Malone, of course, the key, led the, the Jazz to their win in game one by nine and came right back to match the number on his uniform to give Utah two games to nothing lead. And it was 3-0 in overtime in Denver a week ago. Hornacek, the leader, with 27. Then back came the Nuggets. Reggie Williams hit a shot in the final two seconds to give Denver a needed win. And then a double overtime victory here on Tuesday night. Matumbo with seven blocks. He has 36 blocks in the playoff series and came back with a big scoring game as well in that 94-91 win on Thursday. Hannah Storm. Dick, this is what they talked about in the Denver huddle during that timeout. They're getting their open shots. Obviously, they just can't knock them down, as you see here. Uh, Gene Little's their assistant coach, said that he thinks his team is a little tight. He thinks they're feeling the pressure. And what Dan Issa was calling them to do was relax and try to make those shots, Dick. All right, Hannah, and the rookie, Rodney Rogers, delivers. It's 19 of 14. Humphreys against Pat. you got to put a body between him and the hoop. Every time he goes up, he's looking to make a play to keep the ball alive. Rebound, Denver is out. Rebound. Utah 10 to 1 offensively. 10 to 1. Matumbo with a hook. The Kembe Matumbo and it's six unanswered points for the visitors from Denver to open the second quarter. And this has been their series story. Utah ahead, but never really able to put him away, and they're going to get a foul against Matumbo. That'll be his second. Brian Williams was a hero of Seattle with these kinds of play in Game 5, trying to do it here in uh, Game 7, but a tremendous tip. Kempe Matumbo likes the jump hook, but this time he swings it. Yeah, that's the kind of form that uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar would have been proud of that shot. And the Kembe Matumbo grew up in the shadow of the Kilimanjaro, Mount Kilimanjaro in Zaire. He's out, and Lafonso Ellis in. Matumbo with nine rebounds in this first half. See if they come back to Carl Malone against Brian Williams. There's no shot blocking. They get a legal defense, Rodney Rogers. That's the warning. Stockton has returned, so that uh, partnership of Malone will be 
in action. <laughs> That's kind of, well, come on. Now we're younger. We're learning. We just give us a break. Kind of look. And uh, Joel Raul from Stockton, and that may be a double foul. Elbows in close quarter. Oh, this is a good foul. Right here, you got Stockton with the hand on the top, and then Raul with the arms wrapped around him, and uh, he says, no, 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 you've got to give both of us a call if you're going to give one. But the ball goes for John Stockton. Right now, Jake O'Donnell right in there again telling him, hey, guys, you can't have that. It was a double foul. Stockton gets one, and Abdul Raul also ticketed with his first. <laughs> Only 5'11", 175, but pound for pound as feisty as anyone in the league. And it's his total play, and he and Abdul Raul are still going at it. And a technical call this time against Stockton. We now have a technical foul, one to John Stockton and one to Abdul Raul. Oh, it's going to be a double here as well. Stockton not having a good series. He's saying, yeah, it's my foul, but listen. I'm not going to take this from you. <laughs> and Mark Mood is saying, back at you. Meanwhile, 19-18, the Jazz lead. They've not scored here in the second quarter. Two minutes into this period. Chambers. This is where the pressure becomes uh, so tough for Malone. He's got to make every shot. And he does, and was fouled. Rodney Rogers got him from the back side. Because as they set up this play for Carl Malone, no one else wants to shoot. So he realizes he's got to make something happen. And from the rear, Rodney Rogers gets a piece of him. Malone gets a foul. And he has a three-point attempt for Carl Malone from the line. But it has been all Carl Malone here in the first half of play. Take another look. That makes it 21 to 18 Utah with 9.52 left in the first half. The NBA on NBC is brought to you by Speed Stick Deodorant and Speed Stick Antiperspirant, the number one for movers and shakers. By Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. And by Toyota and their full line of quality cars and trucks. Toyota, I love what you do for me. Welcome back, Carl Malone, seven times an all-star, the old NBA power forward. He has matched Denver and shots made in this first half. Six for the mailman, six for the Nuggets team. Number three all-time, all-time in playoff scoring. And the 27.3, interestingly, is his exact average in the playoffs. He's at the line, looking for his 13th point. Not totally pleased with what's happened this last week in game five here in Salt Lake City. The owner, Larry Miller, she shouted uh, during the course of the game at Jerry Sloan to bench Malone. He was having a bad first half. He was one for eight at the time, and he didn't feel the Carl Malone had showed up to play. And Malone was saying, after all the mail I brought to your house, I didn't show up to play. And, uh, in his apology, uh, the owner, Miller, said that he's a fine one to uh, Criticize me for doing it. Rodney Rogers and a foul. And uh, the owner, Larry Miller, suggested of uh, the NBA office and uh, in his own uh, wisdom has elected not to be in attendance today. After a scramble with a couple of Denver uh, fans. Those are his seats and uh, Pro Miller advocate keeping it warm for the next round. Yes. This is a guy with great offensive ability, yet to really strike a match with the Denver Nuggets. They, the Utah Jazz still remember him for the three three-point field goals he made in nine seconds uh, against them earlier this season. But he can post up David Benoit. That's how he got the foul and gets both of those free throws to drop. 22 to 20 after a big series against Seattle. Rogers has been quiet against Utah. Stockton and the foul on Abdul Raouf. His second. Stockton a handful. Raouf uh, is a trapper and is trying to be competitive. He was fortunate to make that play one time earlier. Tried it again. This one goes against him. 
22-20 in a low-scoring first half here in Salt Lake City. Chambers, Lafonso Ellis with two fouls, got a piece of it, stocked and takes it away, and the basket for David Benoit. Brian Williams with a foul, his second. Brian Williams saying he didn't touch him, but Tom Chambers aired this when Stockton was the only one that knew it was up for grabs, and from the rear, it looks like Brian Williams gets a piece of Benoit as he goes up. Now he has a chance for a three-point play. Benoit, who has not had a good series, sends the Jazz lead to five and uh, waves a kind hand at John Stockton for keeping that one alive. Center is first basket. And Malone beats the Nuggets down for the answer. In game five, uh, the Jazz tried to run early with uh, the Denver Nuggets and it cost them. Uh, Malone will streak out whenever he can, but as a team, they're not a team that wants to push the tempo of the game consistently. Ryan Williams over Tom Chambers. And a good job by Ellis on the double team to maintain control. 24 the Jazz with 8.19 left in the opening half. The good thing, Dick, for the Nuggets is they've been able to stay close here. No Matumbo in the ball game. They get a foul against Brian Williams. However, on this play, trying to come through. Carl Malone acted that out very well. It was a bump, all right. Malone staggered out of there. Three on Brian Williams. How many times over the years have you seen Carl Malone on the front end of a John Stockton pass? He knows if he gets out, he's going to be able to get the ball and finish. And uh, if you're a guy that's defending, you've got to always be aware that Malone is going to run the floor. And part of the reward, knowing that your effort is going to be just that, rewarded with a Stockton pass. You can run and be open, but if you don't get the ball, you start thinking twice about that energy expended. <laughs> Kembe Matumbo returns as Brian Williams sits down with three, and suddenly Dan Itzel has some problems on that front line. Two fouls on both Ellis and Matumbo, and three on Brian Williams. And Williams came in, gave him a shot in the arms on the offensive last, a couple of post-up plays, so he's going to be needed uh, in the second half. Tom Malone only gets one. And 16 in the game. Gets the basket for Denver, and it's 28-26. Number eight to go. Alone over Matumbo. Tipped in by Benoit. For David Benoit. And now the action picking up at the offensive end. Spencer back in. He has two fouls. Matumbo. Rebound Benoit. In, in game four in the San Antonio series in which Benoit was so big, it was just that. Offensive rebound, defensive rebound, running the floor. He seems to be in that spirit here early this afternoon. In the Spencer. Benoit for three. Yes! David Benoit, who's not been able to produce much in this series, comes alive. It is David Benoit for the Utah Jazz, and Benoit right there, that one comes out. Benoit, who's had the ability to shoot it deep uh, during his career, but has not cashed at all during this series, comes up big, and his reaction, I'm here today. No points in game six, seven today. Welcome back, and a reminder, tomorrow NBC Sports presents more exciting NBA playoffs action game seven. The defending world champion Chicago Bulls and their nemesis, the New York Knicks. What a struggle, and who will advance to meet the Indiana Pacers? Larry Brown's team with a nice rest after closing out Atlanta on Thursday night. The only team not to go the full seven in this semifinal round of the playoffs. The offensive horse is sitting down, and we'll find out there, find out whether someone else joins Benoit in this period.
period to be a scoring force for Utah. Alfonso Ellis, dead center, is 33-28 points for Ellis. But it's David Benoit, who has made only three of 23 shots in the last three games, and he's three for three. And Sandberg is blocked by Mutombo. A breakout three on one to Stiff. And he's fouled by Benoit. Now that, as you've pointed out throughout the series, Steve Jones, is the key to Denver's success and why they're here in game seven. Blocking one end, run it quick to the other. Tom Chambers challenging Matumbo, who has said, I don't know why they keep doing this, but they do, but that's what you gotta do. You gotta bring it. <laughs> don't you come in my house. Unable to take the three-point play, however, and it's 33-30. Come along, being rested by Jerry Sloan. But if you're Utah, you've got to feel desperate because you can't break away from this game. Every time they get the bust out, the Denver Nuggets have been able to answer, and their confidence continues to grow as they stay close. The Jazz let them hang around. Hornacek now with nine. Rogers against Benoit. Benoit with two. Bounce. Six on the shot clock. Abdul Raouf. He hits here at Delta Center. And meanwhile, at McNichols in Denver, they love that shot. It's 35 32. Mark Root is due for a big game himself, and maybe he's calmed down offensively. We'll find his scoring touch. Stockton wants it. He's got the 10 footer. A little short, Matumbo. He has 11 rebounds and a half. Three on one break. Abdul Raul to sip. And a whistle. 35 34 if it counts. And Jake O'Donnell talking with Dan Issel. Well, this was all over Jake O'Donnell because he wanted to call against John Stockton. Stockton, his second foul. On the bust out and in quick exchange between the two guards, right at the end of the play, and you can't see it down at the bottom, comes John Stockton crashing into Lafonso Ellis, and you see right there he gets knocked, and then boom! If I get the, the bumper car routine, somebody else is going to get a reaction, and that's what Stockton is saying. Somebody knocked me out of that guy. He had an argument, but you don't often see that, but you couldn't miss the fact that he had a collision and draws the foul. Rodney Rogers out, Reggie Williams in, and here comes the mailman, Carl Malone, for Tom Chambers. And the reason the mailman got that short breather, the scoreboard, Ellis, with this free throw, has a chance to tie the ball game up. 523 to go. It would be the first time that Denver's been even since the opening foul. And another miss from the free throw line. It's starting to cost Denver. It's 7 for 13. Alone aggressively. He flew right by Matumbo. 18 points for Malone. He's true to his word. Big hat. Abdul Rahul is way off the mark. Stiff takes it into the heavy traffic and blocks. But the offensive rebound there in a big favor of the Denver Nuggets right now. Malone again. Oh, my. Carl Malone with 20. He's 9 for 11 shooting. But they have needed that 9 for 11. They only have a 5-point advantage. They haven't really been able to get to all of the game. Denver hang around at 5 down. Reggie Williams. And Brett Williams and Hornacek have one. Gabby <laughs> <laughs> jumps in and Jekyll down and says, yeah, okay, I'll let you have the call. But the call we was made on the other side of the score. Four, Ricky Williams. Well, the technical on Ricky Williams, the foul on Hornacek. So they are not going to allow any jabbering or taunting or even anything close. Carl Malone back on top that as soon as they brought him in, he delivered immediate dividend. The reaction is, yes, I'm dancing today. <laughs> Hornacek ends up talking his way into the free throw. This is the technical. And gives him 10 points in the game. And now it's going to be Reggie Williams shooting at the other end. Hornacek goes out with three fouls. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Rocket shooting only 50% from the line, 7 for 14. As good as they were down the stretch in game six, they did that bad this afternoon. See if Reggie converts on this one. 40 to 35, you saw, with 20 to go in the half. Islam really continuing from game six. He's yet to get a field goal down and see if they find a way to get him involved. He's over the floor. Humphrey takes it in. Spencer keeps it alive. involved in all the pick and rolls and as he said he's got to make good decisions with the ball the best one in a passing mode for Carl Malone today Felton Spencer right on top of the rest trade-off is the better. <laughs> it looked like Matumbo got a shot from the rear from Felton Spencer. Stockton reaching in, but Stockton has not been a factor in this game uh, in terms of producing points at the offensive end. They go down a little bit after the official score. I don't know if there's been a change in the call. John Friday is going to come in for Stockton. Friday, the second-year man out of Virginia. Stockton who's uh, contributed his usual role as a top assist man and defensively, not on the offensive end in terms of scoring, but now probably set out the rest of this half with 320 left. And the woes from the line for Denver continue. Eight for 16. Some flies uh, down there in the mine getting some gold, but uh, it's uh, just been Bulls gold opportunity thus far. Remains a seven point lead for the Jazz. Now, Ronnie running the show. This man here, Abdul Wauf, was on the loan, and Friday left the loan. The combo saves his 13th rebound of the half. Denver has done an excellent job of controlling their defensive glass. When there has been a miss, uh, Utah's only gotten one play chance. Abdul Raouf over Crowdy, 42, 37. Six points for but didn't go up strong. Reggie Williams, he can't touch it, and saving him a step. And the foul is on home. Reggie Williams. Reggie Williams is just trying to get out of the way and threw a block into Jay Humphreys, his second foul. Reggie Williams was trying to make a pass right here, knew he couldn't touch the ball again, so I'm not going to let Jay Humphreys get to it. And Jay Humphreys does a good job of... Uh, <laughs> Oh, it pays to be theatrical, a five-point lead, Utah. Hi again, Bob Costas back in New York. Now, coming up on the Prudential Halftime Report, we'll bring you highlights of the Houston win over Phoenix in their Game 7. The Rockets won it by 10 and now await the winner of the Denver-Utah game in the Western Conference Final. After the game today, Charles Barkley talked about his future. If it's in a way possible they can repair me medically, surgically, whatever, I will be back. But if they can't, I'm not going to torture myself again. And we'll have more from Barkley at halftime. Back now to Utah to rejoin Dick Enberg and Steve Jones.
All right, Bob Houston, the winner by 10. Hakeem Olajuwon, 37 points and 17 rebounds. As uh, we await the uh, MVP balloting, and uh, Olajuwon showing why he thinks he should be the man. Houston beating Phoenix awaits the winner of this one. Will it be Utah or Denver that opens at Houston on Monday night, the Western Final? But uh, one thing for certain now, the West will bring a new member to the NBA Final Party. Phoenix is out. Robert Pack comes back in the game for Raouf, who was just getting the heater going. He's made his last three. Center. See all of those blue jerseys come back, so they're making a concerted effort of committing to keep them at one shot. Less than two minutes to go. Robert Pack to Alfonso Ellis. Reggie Williams. Harold Malone rebounds. He has six. Body for Stockton, the playmaker. Open in the Spencer. And on Alfonso Ellis. Blocked by Matumbo, his second. And the foul on Pack pushing Malone. One thing about the youthful Nuggets, they don't recognize control. And when the other player has it, Felton Spencer thought he was in deep. Matumbo reacted to make the save. The ball will come out long, and Robert Pack just keeps chasing, and he keeps chasing the NBA record for blocks. He's going to build and build on it. He's got two today to give him 38 total. That's an all-time record. He sets the record 31 in just five games against Seattle. So Dikembe Mutombo, 69 blocks in the two series playoffs. Did you see that graphic? 14 rebounds already. 14. Meanwhile, Carl Malone racking up his own numbers. This would be his 22nd point. And back to a seven-point advantage. The Utah Jazz. That's been their biggest lead. Denver has never led. They had a chance to tie it at 35-34. This is free throw. Pack against Roddy. And that'll be against Pack his third. So foul trouble starting to be a factor with the Denver Nuggets. Pack led with the forearm and just trying to push Roddy out of the way. So he picks up the personal foul. Mahmoud Abdul Raouf will come back in the ball game. Pack not happy the way the whistles have been blown against them. Brian Williams and Robert Pack each with three for Denver and John Stockton being rested with three. Utah. But if you're Carl Malone and the Jazz, you cannot feel good about your seven-point advantage because you really haven't dominated the game and it's been a huge first half by Malone just to keep that lead. Whistle away from the ball and the illegal defense to call and that's a technical foul. Jerry Sloan was up shouting in Jake O'Donnell's ear to help him out. Matumbo out of position. <laughs> Listen, if you got some free time in the offseason, come down to Illinois. I got these swamp meats and these farm fairs and auctions, and we'll have some fun. Sloan always takes a lot of money along with him when he drives around because he loves to go with those yard sales and he's uh, made some great bargains. He's the Al McGuire of the modern world. Or Al is of another world. That was That's absolutely <laughs> right. Last minute. Corbin. Over Reggie Williams. Stiff saves. Barely. To look at all of the other offensive players for Utah and say they are all tight. Uh, they are not shooting the ball with any kind of reason. Uh, and there's that foul on Carl Malone with that swat of his, the quick slap. And uh, it's a very effective defensive weapon, probably best in the entire league at getting the ball while it's down around the waist of an opponent. He's got tremendously quick things. hands. Of course, opponents feel he fouls a lot, but uh, tough to see if he does. makes it 9 for 18 as a team. Then we're at the line. Pretty consistent with his regular season average. Lafonso Ellis in his second year out of Notre Dame. And most of the damage that Ellis has done against the Jazz has been in the second half, particularly in the fourth quarter of play. So the points that he's got here early in the 
ball game, a bonus for Dan Isco. Ten misses, however, for the Nuggets. Chambers. Biggest lead of the game. Eight points. About a two-second difference in the clocks at the end of the half. is the Prudential Halftime Report, brought to you by the Prudential. Peace of mind. It comes with every piece of the rock. Halftime at the Delta Center, Game 7, Jazz leading the Nuggets 46 to 38. Carl Malone with almost half of Utah's total. He's got 22 points on 9 of 11 shooting, really stepping up. Stockton strapped with three fouls, didn't score in the first half. Denver being hurt by their own poor free throw shooting, just 9 of 19 from the stripe. The winner of the Denver-Utah game plays Houston in the Western Conference Final beginning Monday night in Houston. The Rockets advanced with a 104-94 win earlier today against the Phoenix Suns. The Suns trailed by as many as 16 in the first half, but they came back in this Charles Barkley basket, cut Houston's lead to one at 77-76. Playing hurt as you see him hobbling, Barkley scored 24. Rookie Sam Cassell off the bench with 22, including this three-pointer for Houston. He was a huge factor in their win. And Akeem Olajuwon, after a slow start, proved unstoppable in the second half. 37 points, 17 rebounds. Fouled hard in the closing seconds here by Charles Barkley. At this point, the outcome was already decided. Vernon Maxwell took exception to Barkley's foul on Olajuwon. Pushes and shoves, they were both ejected. Barkley departs. Olajuwon and the Rockets go on against either the Jazz or the Nuggets. And after the game, Barkley talked about his future. Number one, congratulations to the Houston Rockets. I felt like coming in uh, into this series, this would be the toughest team we would have to play if we were going to win a championship. And uh, I think the difference today was the home court. I uh, really didn't mean anything in this entire series until the last three games. And uh, got to take your, your hats off to them. They played a terrific series. And I believe that uh, I think the best team won this series. I am disappointed, but I'm somewhat glad it's over because there's no fun playing in pain. And this is my game plan. I'm going to meet with Dr. Emerson. I'm going to meet with two more back specialists, uh, hope preferably two best specialists in the world. And if they can make me better, that's great. If they can't, it's been a great ride. And it's that simple. Leaving the door open, at least. A reminder about tomorrow's game seven between the Knicks and the Bulls. We'll have it for you with showtime at 3 Eastern time. Tip off at 3.30 from the Garden. The conference finals start Monday, and you can see them every night through Friday night with our colleagues on TNT. Then we'll pick up coverage next Saturday through the rest of the conference finals and the finals here on NBC. Up next, after a break, the insiders join the proceedings as we talk about the Eastern Conference picture. That's after this message from Prudential and a word from the NBA. Okay, the insiders join us. Bill Walton, Peter Bessey, Julius Irving. Game 7 of the Knicks and Bulls is here tomorrow on NBC. As we said, showtime at 3, tip-off at 3.30. Peter Bessey was at Knicks practice earlier today. They are very well coached and they are disciplined. Uh, and in this league, it's, it's hard, I think, to get players to be that disciplined offensively and that unselfish offensively. So. Uh, they have done a great job, and I think it's been uh, the byproduct of about three years of work in getting them to do it. Uh, disappointed in the fact that I let Bill Carter and Luke Longley got eight, eight offensive rebounds between them. And, you know, just got to lay a body on them, keep them off the boards, and, you know, whenever we out-rebound them, we win. 
Peter Vesey, as you can see, sporting the sneakers, running around so much at the game last night in Chicago, gets the early morning flight, gets to practice, gets back over to the studio. So you go first. Had no feet problems till I started hanging out with him. <laughs> Tore my ligaments each year. Bone spurs, stress <laughs> fractures. <laughs> uh, I think the key of practice today was the uh, Riley and, and the Knicks are very upset with the way that Scottie Pippen has been gloating and uh, showboating at them uh, for the series. They're going to try and put a stop to that tomorrow. The other thing was that uh, Derek Harper looks like he'll be starting tomorrow. Cho Charles Oakley told me that. and He, he also said that he, he should have started in game six. So those are uh, a couple things we can look for. Home court will be key. We saw it in the Houston game earlier. It's holding true right now with the Utah game. The key for Chicago, as far as I'm concerned, is their style of play. If they get plays that incorporate two, three, and four guys at one time with the quick ball movement early in the shot clock to get the style of play happening that negates the Knicks' pressure defense, they've got an outstanding chance to win. Plus, as Ewing said, the center play for Chicago, Cartwright, so huge last night. He basically hasn't played all season. What he's doing is remarkable. He's got to do it one more time, and Longley, of course, has got to play strong as well. Doc? Well, he clearly, home court has held up through six games, and each team has had a chance to win on the other's court, even though they haven't done it yet. And I say yet because I think the Bulls are actually playing better than the Knicks. And uh, for whatever reason, whether they think that the Knicks are the favorite team and the Knicks are supposed to win, and they're just being loose, and getting good contributions from a lot of different places rather than the one or two, somehow the way this thing is going to play out is that the, the Knicks, if they can relax a little bit, will have a decided advantage and probably will win. But if they stay up tight as they were uh, last night, then the Bulls have a tremendous advantage and probably will upset them. Well, right, but the anger, the anger from last night's defeat at Chicago Stadium, that will boil all day. The Knicks will come out very strong. This is Ewing's big moment. The Knicks need the game of the year to beat the Bulls. The Bulls have shown they're a better team at every position except center, and even that was voided out in game six and in a couple other games, too. They need, they need it all to happen for them in game seven. Well, even though counting today's Phoenix-Houston result, the road team has now lost 15 consecutive seventh games of NBA playoff series, dating back to Julius Irving's 76ers beating the Celtics in 82 in the Eastern Conference Finals even though that bodes well for the Knicks. So it seems the Bulls have been in and had a chance to win all three of the previous games at Madison Square Garden. This should be terrific tomorrow. Now, the winner of tomorrow's game gets the Pacers in the Eastern Conference Final beginning Tuesday night. Marianne Grabovoy was at Pacers practice in Indianapolis. Thanks, Bob. The Indiana Pacers have picked up playoff speed like a Penske car out of the fourth turn at the Indy 500. Having won 15 of their last 17 games, they are 7-2 and two in the playoffs, having swept Orlando. And in round two against the Hawks, all four of their wins were by double-digit margins. The Pacers' Reggie Miller says he wants to see the Knicks in the Eastern Conference Finals. He wants to see his old friend, John Starks. This probably stem from last year's playoffs, but, um, you know, I think uh, John is um, a fierce competitor. He plays hard, um, but, you know, I just love going against him. Reggie wants to play New York. Uh, he has the score to settle. That's great. Uh, the rest of us are just thrilled to play. But uh, whomever we play, we know it's going to be a tough series. I think we match up probably better against Chicago, but I'd rather play New York. <laughs> you know, you want to play the best team. You know, they had the second best record in the East. You know, we knocked off number one, so uh, I think we would like to knock off number two also. That's it from Indianapolis. Now back to you in the New York studios. The Pacers, by the way, were 0-4 for the year against the Knicks, 1-4 against Chicago, but they're a different team in the latter stages of the season. They're playing some of the best ball in the league right now. Indiana is on fire. Everything's rolling. All the pieces are there. To beat Indiana, you've got to attack, I think, the two weakest parts of a very strong team. And that's Rick Smith's. Some of the things he does, he gets in foul trouble, he gets tired, his shot blocking is not as great as it should be. And then Workman, his shot selection in the backcourt and his ability to feed the post, sometimes questionable. Larry Brown has won two more games in the playoffs, uh, six, than uh, the Pacer organization has won in the previous 17 years. Amazing. I mean, he is the difference in this team and Byron Scott. Well, you're just appro approaching the halfway point of the playoffs with respect to winning the title. And you see the role that injuries have played with Barkley, with Kevin Willis. You know, their teams didn't go far because they were injured. The Indiana Pacers are young and strong, 
And uh, I don't think they're boasting any injuries right now. So I think that might be one of the keys to this conference final series. Peter, I'm going to do you a favor. Save you some letters. They've won seven, seven right? Seven. They had to take three against Orlando right, right, right. and four against the Hawks. Right, right. All right. We'll send it back to Utah for the second half. <laughs> Dick Enberg and Snapper Jones will rejoin you with the Jazz leading the Nuggets by eight right after these messages from your local station. This has been the Prudential Halftime Report, brought to you by the Prudential. Peace of mind. It comes with every piece of the rock. Utah leading 46-38. Let's go to Hannah Storm. Coach, uh, very similar to Game 5 against Seattle. Your team having some trouble shooting early. Were they tight, or was it just something that uh, Utah's doing on offense? No, I think it was more a case of us being tight because a lot of them were wide open shots. But we shot better in the second quarter, so uh, if we can hang in there till the end, we'll be okay. Any way to get your team some more easy opportunities? You're fond of saying, hey, I can't help it if they're not shooting their jumpers. But well, well, what we're going to do is uh, try to continue to push the basketball. I thought that uh, when we did get out and run, we did get some easy opportunities, easy baskets. We have to do more of that in the second half. Do you think your team has relaxed at, the, at this point? What's their mental and emotional state right now? No, I don't think they relax. We keep okay. coming back. We're going to be all right. But I think, uh, I think at the beginning of this game, they were a little too tight. You're within eight points. Do you please? Yeah, if we can find a way to uh, make Carl miss a few shots, we'll be okay. Got any magic left, Coach? I hope so, Hannah. I hope so. All right, good luck in the second half, Dick. All right, Hannah, and magic is what the Nuggets need. No team, no team ever in playoff history has gone from 0-3 to win a playoff series, a seven-game series. And it's only happened once to even get to the seventh before Denver, and that was 43 years ago. So all the odds seem to be in favor of the Utah Jazz, and they have the eight-point lead as well. I, you know what they also say in sports, the longer the streak, the greater the chances are that it's going to get busted. These guys don't know anything about <laughs> 43 years ago. <laughs> All they know is about today, and they think they got a chance, and they're close because they have shot the ball very, very poorly, and yet they're within eight. And if you don't have Carl Malone doing that kind of business, the Denver Nuggets, they could be on top at half. These are the Miller Genuine Draft halftime statistics, and on the defensive side, Dikembe Mutombo with 14 rebounds and three points as the Nuggets have out-rebounded the Utah Jazz, but they've had trouble at the line. Nine for 19 free throw shooting, or they'd be right there with Utah. Second half, coming up. Welcome back. We're ready for the second half, and a reminder again, the home court advantage in Game 7 with Houston beating Phoenix today. 15 straight times the home team has won game seven leading scores no one in double figures for the Nuggets Reggie Williams with eight and Carl Malone carrying the weight of these playoffs and his great nine-year career in the NBA on his broad shoulders with a big half 22 points as we go into the second half oh, oh, Reggie Williams the Kemi Matumbo fifth Ellis, the same five that started for Denver. It's Corbin, Stockton, Spencer, Malone, and Hornacek for Utah. Matumbo way out of his range, and Malone has the rebound. Matumbo had to take the shot against the clock, and he looked up and saw it was down to four, so he aired it out. But they haven't really been very successful in their half-court set so far here in this uh, first two quarters of play, and it's the start of the third. Stockton playing with three fouls. First time that either team's had a 10-point lead. In fact, uh, Utah has never had the lead. 12 for Hornacek. In case you're wondering, uh, uh, Denver has not had the lead. Just looking back a two weeks ago in Seattle, the score at halftime then was 44-41 Seattle. Denver rallying to finally win it in overtime. Matumbo. Right over the top, misses everything. Comes out to Abdul Raouf. And he scores. Opportunity. Baptist is what they have been thriving off of. And, and that was another one because the jumbo had just overlaid one from the amount of foot away. Doctor. His first basket of the game. Stockton knocks it out of bounds. That'll go to Denver. Stock 
Houston has been struggling since game six late, where he was not shooting the basketball, has not shot it well a few this afternoon, but gets set, gets set when they go in, and comes out very aggressive after seeing the ball going fast. 14 on the shot clock as they get set up. Knocked away by Stockton, recovered by Smith with seven. Reggie Williams for three. because Carl Malone has been bearing these all afternoon. Malone's, he withstands a hit and will go to the line. Four for five shooting is uh, Carl Malone. He hopes that uh, his Carl, first name K-A-R-L, won't uh, be the same unfortunate day as George Carl suffered in Seattle and uh, continues to torture him. Well, we remember in the Seattle game five, the Sonics were able to bust out to an 11-point lead. It looked like they were going to put that game away at the top of the third, and the Nuggets, they were with them. They came back and eventually won. They got a 12-point lead now, and the Nuggets feel if they're within 10 or 12, they are still going to prevail and win the game. They feel that the fourth quarter will be there, the younger legs, the demands on the tripping foul on Stockton will be his fourth. It's tough to get a rhythm for a game when you're sitting on the bench. It's not just very frustrated uh, by the calls, but it's been touched and pushed and in the wrong place at the wrong time. You see the reaction as Jay Humphreys comes in very quickly for him. As the Nuggets started the game having trouble scoring, so they do the second half. But they continue to do this. Try to keep the ball alive. Give themselves second, third opportunities. He dribbles that one off his foot. Jay Humphreys in the game, and Mahmoud Abdul Raouf has got to think about attacking him. He's got a bad leg and really hasn't performed well in the series. Reggie Williams with a rebound and a foul. See what happened to Ellis, but the foul was on Spencer, his third. He's up now. He may have twisted an ankle on that rebound. Is uh, Reggie Williams came flying in? He goes up for the ball and comes down, and it looks like either the ankle or the knee buckled, and he is rising in pain. Comes down on the foot of Dalton Spencer. The left ankle turns as he landed on Spencer's foot. He's able to walk uh, gingerly off the court. That's a very good sign. I mean, he's walking fairly uh, strongly on that ankle, and what they'll probably do is try to get some more tape on it and uh, get him back in the ball game. Nice that down. Brian Williams replaces Ellis. Two to 40 Utah. Houston waits with smiles. When he's in seven against Phoenix by the end of it. Reggie Williams. Denver with 10.
game, trying to attack this Brian Williams. The combo able to knock home the second chance. He has five points. It is a left ankle frame or strain that we hear now. It's not serious and no return. Now Malone misses one. That's been rare today. problems there and accepting that as a foul. And all we've seen throughout the playoffs, that's pretty simple. Chief is the word that, that we used on this side, and that was the chief foul. And Matumbo trying to stay out on the floor have to sit down. They come back from the Fonzoella. The fans loved it. Malone is part of his total game. He's done everything right. Now goes out that great shot blocker. They'll take it inside. Different game with the tempo on the final. But the Nuggets have to make someone else beat them. And if they can keep Carl Malone passing, certainly the way that the Jazz has got the ball, they have a chance to get back in the game. The post-up plays have been the ones that have been the most successful for the Nuggets. They get a little legal defense. defense. Warning. Yeah. It's it's a legal warning. warning. And so I'm not thinking so now. Five minutes yeah. at a timeout. 6.35 left in the third. The Utah lead is 12. The NBA on NBC is brought to you by Sprite. Image is nothing. Thirst is everything. Obey your thirst. Sprite. By the people at Nike who encourage you to just do it. And by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? The Kirby Matembo. Five points, 15 rebounds, a couple of block shots, but also four fouls. And here is the fourth. They're running down court away from the ball, and, uh, well, they're a little push, and Malone, Malone got that slide down. He does, but he got right in the way of Dikembe Mutombo. Now, the rule is you got to let the offensive player at least have a place to run. If the call should have gone anywhere, should have gone against Carl Malone and the Utah Jazz. 12-point game. Point of the third quarter is Reggie Williams inside, and the foul on Carl Malone will be his second. But it sends the Nuggets to a dangerous place, the free throw line, where they have been dismal today. Good baseline driving. Very few players take advantage of the baseline being open these days when he's able to get in and hurt the interior defense of Carl Malone and the Utah Jazz. Nine for 20 free throw shooting. Reggie Williams, the veteran, the captain, the only player on the team that's 30 years of age. The team averages 25. Still today, Reggie Williams was their best free throw shooter, 12 for 13. He's 4 for 7 this afternoon. 11 point game, 6.21 to go. In the third. Tom Hammond sees his first duty of the day for Denver. 21. The offense of Utah really slows down because Jackson is not in there. And they're working against the clock now at 5. Go with it. I 
pounds that big fat chest and says, I am the man and I will make all of the plays and a no look. Easy two for Ty Corbett. He is bailing him out this afternoon. He may not have been happy earlier in the week, but he's making a lot of folks joyous now. Well, it used to be the New Orleans Jazz and a product of Louisiana. Carl Malone has got it jazzed up here at the Delta Center. In the series, averaging 26, he has 28 points. We still have over five minutes remaining in the third quarter. Plus three assists and one block shot. 15 point lead for the Jazz in the third. Now what the Nuggets need to try to do is stay close. They want to cut this game back down to single digits by the end of the third quarter of play. And they've got to find one play that will work for them at the offensive end. In previous series, it's been a post-up play. They tried it for Brian Williams. He picked up a foul. Ray Williams comes out. Robert Robert Pack will come into the game. So they're going small, but they've got Rodney Rogers up front with Tom Hammond. Norman committed the foul, his first. Each team with 14 fouls now, so they'll be at the line right away. In this quarter, Pack has not scored in the game. Ryan Williams, heavy traffic, and makes a tough five vote. He has eight. And they know they can get a shot against Tom Chamber. That's why Hornacek had to come over to double team. So who's ever guarding Hornacek would be thinking about going to the hoop. by Corbin, but it was deflected by Rodney Rogers. Brian Williams has the ability to post up turns in face and uh, really worked hard to get this one, but a good, strong effort produces two out of the half. Hornacek gets the two at the other end. He has 14. Again, a 15-point ball for Utah. Post up, and this has been a play that's been affected, but he couldn't control Ty Corbin. Corbin stole it. Corbin at the other end. Corbin! Utah by 17. They're on their feet now. Scoring Swerge. 
Robert back inside. Can't score. Brian Williams. Has it knocked away? There's Malone with that quick slap denying. And Pack uh, holding a right eye that must have been close in that exchange. Pack coming down the lane hard. I think his imagination got away from him here because you're not dunking from out there, little man. And he just left it short and his own man hit him. Abdul Rauf, a double set up. this play give and go if you cut to the basket the defense has to respect that and that's what Tom Malone is doing he's making them respect cutters you come down the lane the middle is open because Matumbo is out guarding him you got two and uh, that's uh, what my food Ra Raul is saying somebody's got to be back there Humphrey's first point for the game three point play to the other point is to go in the third. Chambers all over. Matumbo picks up the foul. His second. It can be Matumbo, and it's not as simple as that, his name. He has actually eight names. It can be a nickname given to him. He was born a very weak uh, child. He was in the hospital for six months of his life. Too soft the body, too soft, his family said. So Dikembe translates banana. Soft as a banana. Matumbo, the name of his uh, village. Tom Chambers does not think so. <laughs> and he's pushing and shoving, and Jake O'Donnell want to make sure there were no extra exchanges. Stayed in front of Matumbo, let him cool off, and let's see how he does with these opportunities at the line. He's now two for five, free throw shooting. Blocks way up, averaging six blocks a game in this series. And it's both free throws. And Stockton on the bench for Utah. Humphrey's uh, running the show. He's a key cog in Utah's thrust toward the Western Finals. Reggie Williams will trade off the rim and Brian Williams to pass. Brian Williams, 53 Utah, 10 for Brian. They can get some stops because right now it's been very easy for the Utah Jazz to score. That's why they busted the game open. They've got to make uh, the rest of the Jazz tentative at the offensive end. They have not been able to close down long low. Five on the clock. Hornacek takes it in deep again. Ryan Williams to pack. The energizer, Robert Pack, takes it all the way in. Oh, he has that good look off move on the dribble. And then he sees a little daylight, and like a good halfback flashing off garden tackle, makes the play. But with that dance to daylight, he gets his first two in the afternoon. And in the half left in the third. Here's Malone. Way off on that one. So quickly, Pack has it in the offensive end. And scores again. Two in a row. And the lead cuts a 14. Six unanswered by Denver. See how quickly you can get back in the game. They're now back in touch. And if they can get one more stop and a score, they're within 12 and possibly 10 before the quarter concludes. Inside the chamber. Ty Corbin. Corbin, who had that great start a week ago in game three, that was key in uh, Utah winning an overtime. 
He had 19 in that ball game, was free and easy, and Stella and Telly started posting him up. And Rodney Rogers has to do that and make him a defensive liability. Reggie Williams uh, and Williams leads them to the 13. Seven second difference in the clock. The toughest part about uh, trying to make a comeback is that everything has to go right for you. Otherwise, you see your opponent going to the line. Carl Malone gets a good, quick first step by Mazumbo. They try to collapse, but nobody's really set in their position, so the call goes against Reggie Williams and the Nuggets. Third personal third team, but Malone has been the man this afternoon, and Issel understands that. And if they're going to get any kind of a run, they've got to get the ball out of his hands and make some other people shoot. Malone, six for eight now from the line. He sights in. Looking for the 29th. His uh, partner in offensive excellence, uh, watching as a spectator uh, much of the third quarter. Team point lead Utah. Shot clock is off. Imagine this situation is going to try to bust down the lane and create some sort of penetration. close and Utah with a tremendous burst in the third with a man at the whip Carl Malone a 15 point lead at the end of three now a word from your local station this copyrighted telecast of the National Basketball Association may not be retransmitted reproduced or rebroadcast without the express written consent of the NBA during the playoffs. Last week we had the gorilla in Phoenix. Who's our mystery cameraman today? Well, he does do it all, doesn't he? John, John Stockton back on the court. Two points and six assists today. And now it's a matter of not making mistakes. A big, big lead at home for Utah. with five. Rattles out and Reggie Williams pass it for Denver and pack on the run. They beat his entire team down court. They want to come inside to Matumbo. Again, the post-up play has been the most effective one for them. Alfonso Ellis. Boxing with a rebound. Carl Malone at the other end with both palms Facing the floor as if to say, hey, slow it down. No hurry here. Let's burn up as much clock as we can. There's plenty of time in the game, and the Utah Jazz can't become a stagnant team at the offensive end, so they've got to still try to stay in the attack mode. The combo with a rebound on the miss by Spencer. 16 boards for the combo. Corbin had a big third quarter, eight points. And Pat trying to cut off the driver, Stockton picks up the foul, his fourth. Dan Issel, who, as everyone knows, a big lover for Obrez growing up in Kentucky and going to school there and owning a race uh, farm himself. He picked Bloomin' Affair in the Preakness, and it has been a Bloomin' Affair for these young Denver Nuggets. Well, he was wrong. Preakness was won today by Tabasco Cat, Kentucky Derby winner Gopher Jim second and concerned third. So maybe uh, that's the uh, symbol of the day. Oh, the 
Boone Affair didn't get on the board at Pimlico, and it's going to take a real miracle now for this uh, wonderful playoff life of Denver to continue. They need to have some pressure on the basketball and make the Jazz shoot the ball under pressure from the outside. They haven't given up a lot of offensive rebounds. The Shelton Spencer comes up with a big catch and throw back out. No scoring yet. We played over two minutes of the fourth quarter. shakes his head. He knows he hasn't gotten a break. That one goes off Brian Wave. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can't win them all. Miller Genuine Draft presents Genuine Moments. Today's Miller Genuine Draft Genuine Moments takes us back 10 years to the 1984 Western Conference First round, Utah Jazz making their first appearance in the playoffs, pushed to the limit by Dan Issel and the Denver Nuggets. But the Nuggets defeated in five games as number four, Adrian Dantley, led the Jazz as he poured in 30 points, 12 rebounds. In recognition of this moment, Miller Genuine Draft donates $1,000 to the Thurgood Marshall Scholarship Fund. Dan Issel's team winning six games at the verge of elimination. That's an all-time playoff record. And it's there to keep that going. They've got to have Reggie and Miracle do something good. They get a call against Jay Humphreys to try to get it started. Facing elimination in these playoffs six times. Three against Seattle. Three to deny Utah until this one. Phoenix in 93 had five. Reggie Williams at the line, looking for the first point by either team in this fourth quarter, and it took two minutes and 33 seconds to score. Lafonso Ellis has been huge for the Nuggets in the fourth quarter of play, and they gave him a chance to try to get them something that ankles, traps, bothered him still, so he's down, so they've got to find another big force. Reggie has been 50% from the line this afternoon. A beautiful pass to Spencer almost ripping down the backboard. Reggie Williams has his score. Jackson, with no pressure on him, has the ability to see people cutting to the lane. Not much contact there, but uh, the foul goes against Reggie on the way up as he got the other, the arm closest to the basket. Belton Spencer is his score. And the lead is back to 17. without a field goal to open the fourth quarter. We come back to Reggie Williams. They don't have a great outside shooter. The only one on the roster is Abdul Raouf. And a steal by Malone. Going to be quite a portfolio. He gives us a smile as he talks back on defense. He knows he's good today. And he promised he would be.
this with a deuce. It's a 15-point lead for Utah. Nuggets are not yet at the point of no return and getting back into this game, but they really have to be able to force some turnovers and stop them from scoring close. Off the miss by Felton Spencer. 17 boards now for the Thunder. and you're going to get a foul. Stockton appeared to be moving into pack, not establishing. He had not really established position, but that's uh, a moot point. Five on Robert's pack, and, you know, Stockton taking a chance himself with four personals. Oh, no traffic. Spencer came out of there. Twisting and turning it. Utah with a 77 62 lead and Hornacek from Malone. Rebound Williams. Back out playing with five. Still no field goal for the Nuggets in the quarter and they played Stiff. four and a half minutes. Stiff wants the ball. This is a play that has worked for them. Him being able to get it shot against Hornacek. Knocked him with a block. And then a jump ball. right here. He thought he was going to be able to overpower him, but it was a big play by Stockton from the rear. He got it back and it felt Spencer who tied him up. Felt Spencer with about a half foot advantage on this tip. But Smith able to bat it out to Reggie Williams. The Nuggets difficulty in the scoring, and so it is And the tumble throws it away as Pack gets knocked down. The pass goes right to Benoit. And Itzel's wondering, will I get a whistle? And, and the lucky Brown suit has run out. Going to Stockton. To Spencer. from Minnesota. Mike Brown going to the Timberwolves. Milton Spencer. Timeout Denver with 6.45 left. The NBA on NBC is brought to you by cold-filtered Miller Genuine Draft. Get out of the old, get into the cold. By Castrol Syntex, the synthetic oil that protects in ways other oils can. And by Mazda. Mazda, it just feels right. Welcome back to Salt Lake City. Here's that play where Pack went down and Matumbo tried to pass to a man who was not there. Well, oh, 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 Robert Graham right here kind of put him in a box. And you'll end up down here. Watch the foot of Carl Malone as we let it clear. Now suddenly, he's down. Matumbo uh, pleading his case with Steve Jabby, but uh, to no avail. Meanwhile, the Jazz fans... 17-point lead, apparently on their way to Houston for game one. A goal to host for three. Malone pats it away. And he hustles down court. dream season uh, being cut down by their own inability to score. They haven't hit a field goal. That has been the storyline of this ball game. They just have not been able to get it up and down from the perimeter, and the Utah Jazz are willing to give them all of those shots. They've been able to get second opportunity. Brian Williams almost got himself one there, 
but Ben Wong controls. In case you're wondering, Houston and the Jazz played six times and were three and three in the regular season. from the Nuggets, who have scored five unanswered. The cut into the Utah lead at 12. Well, if they're going to go out, they're going to go out making everyone uh, realize that this is a tough, gritty team. And Reggie Williams fired one from deep, and Dan Issel thinks, oh, about time. That was the same spot where Williams hit to keep the series alive at the end of game four. Welcome back to Salt Lake City. 11-point Utah lead, 4.04 to go. A reminder tonight after the playoffs, it's Wing, Fantasy of the Stars at 8, 7 Central. That followed by the one-hour empty nest season finale and the season finale of Sisters. Special guest Naomi Judge, all on NBC. And, of course, tomorrow at 3 o'clock Eastern. Decisive Game 7, the Bulls, the defending champions, going for four in a row in the New York Knicks. Trying to put up the whole sign and move into the finals in the East against Indiana. Fans here at the Delta Center want to see the hammer thrown down. They feel they need one or two more deep shots. They almost got one there from Felton Spencer. Ryan Williams with his fourth foul. Here's Hannah. Denver's the most tenacious team in the NBA, and they feel that they still have a shot at winning this thing. They think they just need one or two consecutive defensive stops because they're encouraged by the way they've been shooting the ball in recent minutes. One no-go. They will definitely be without Lafonso Ellis for the rest of the game. He's unable to play on that sprained left ankle. Dick? And that's a bad loss, a tough loss for Denver. And Lafonso Ellis has scored 40%. 40% of his total in the entire playoff game in the fourth quarter. Now the shooting percentages by quarter. Denver off fully 14%. And even with his recent third, hitting only 25% in the fourth quarter. Spencer with two free throws, 11 points in the game. It's a bad sign when Felton Spencer has got seven in the quarter. Carl Malone has to score. He's not making a big dent in that lead. Mark Moon. He is inside the line. He 3 71. The clock is the enemy of the Denver Nuggets. And there's now 325 to go. Malone just inside the line. Jesse 
Robert Pack to the Tumbo and a foul on Malone. He denied the easy slam and puts Matumbo on the line. Third foul on the male man. The Nuggets do an excellent job of penetrating the basketball and breaking down the defense of the Utah Jazz. They're trying to go for the two-handed hammer. The Kimbe Matumbo. Matumbo was so remarkable in game six and shooting the ball from the line that he settled into his old self this afternoon. Maybe he's going to come up with some sharp shooting down the stretch. It's an 11-point game. He's trying to get it to 10. as we have talked about these jazz and and dominating uh, the ball game they've only scored nine points in the quarter themselves so uh, they're, they have slowed down they have become a team that is now not really playing to win the game outright but to keep their opponents from catching them and they're working the clock the with the deflection Malone is 0 for 7 in this quarter that's the difference Mack takes it right up Matumbo's back Matumbo running the alley and back says, I'll just ride him. And now they believe in Denver. McNichols Sports Arena at the live shot of the thousands have gone to the home arena in Denver to cheer on my. It's an eight-point game. Nuggets have relied on their defense, and it's good reaction by Dikembe Mutombo uh, that gets them out in the sprint. And Robert Pack uh, follows Mutombo right down the lane. What a block! <laughs> 85, 75, under two to go. Sunday, it's do or die for the Bulls and the Knicks. Last night, with their backs to the wall, Pippen and the Bulls kept their quest for the four feet alive. Now the series shifts back to Ewing and Company's home court for the decisive Game 7. A trip to the conference finals is on the line when the ball goes in the air at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific, Sunday on NBC. winning the last three games, outscoring Utah in the fourth quarter. They led by a total of 20 in the last three games. And another plus six today. But will it be enough? As time runs out on this Cinderella playoff run by the Denver Nuggets. They wanted to try to get a three-point attempt coming out of that huddle, and they're working against uh, a real tenacious defense. Reggie Williams can hit the three. Brian Williams gets it back. the clock, 143. Well, Denver at the line, and you have to wonder what if they've been more successful there. 19 for 31 in the game. They trail by 10. Williams is 2 for 2. He's not uh, asking for a test of heart, Dan Ethel. It's a play signal. They want to come out of this with some pressure. They're expecting Brian Williams to make the free throw, but they want to come up and be very aggressive, see if they can't force a turnover as he gets the second one to fall. Come on. 
be his best. Carl Malone with a little payback. The Kimby Matumbo has shut down the middle on a lot of occasions. Malone gets this one and then gives him a little of uh, his own medicine. No way. <laughs> he said, I'll get you back. <laughs> did not go out on the note that he would like to, and certainly he wants to win a championship. That's the driving force for Carl Malone. He has said that when he wins a championship, he'll be through. He doesn't, he doesn't have it yet. So there's still time to play. He throws for Denver today. A real sore spot. Tumbo gets one out of two. It's back to a 10-point game. 115 to go. It'll be Utah and Houston beginning on Monday night. We'll see you in game four Sunday back here in Utah. I just set up a quick hitting three for my food. Carl Malone will foul. The one thing he didn't want to do is foul, stop the clock. Five fouls on Carl Malone. Not happy with himself nor the call. Number five. But, uh, the call. We started today talking about Carl Malone, and he just stepped forward and said, hey, I'm not going to leave this place with anything left. You're going to get all I've got. And when he gives you all he's got, it's something special. And it was for these Utah fans today. 31 points, 14 rebounds, 6 assists. He drew a couple three fouls. He was, he was huge in that first half of play. And you look at the first and second quarters where he had 10 and 12, and that really was the life force for the Utah Jazz because they were able to get a little breathing room and then they got some other people to come into play in that third quarter. They give their foul that they had to waste and now uh, they'll set up again. So they've got to come in and try to make a quick deal on the ball if they can and try to force some turnover and the Jazz have only made six. Abdul Lowe reaching in and it's the fifth foul on him. Who made the two free throws at the other end? Luke's best free throw shooter. One thing for certain, all those fans cheering at McNichols Arena and in the Mile High City, oh, their <laughs> young team came down to earth in this game seven, but they were an incredible story in this NBA playoff season. Stockton makes it 90-79. And Dan Essel said after the Seattle series, I hope my team, they're so young, I hope they don't think they're going to win the NBA championship this year. And they've carried him much farther than he and everyone expected. But what's important in Denver and Essel is that this is a team building for their championship season. Golden State Warriors are another in the West. Well, they have much to look forward to. The Utah Jazz and uh, their faithful here feel that their moment is now.
Djembe Matamba. Just now. It's been a great game, and uh, they played hard, and they played the whole game really hard and clean, and you don't see that a lot. We were watching a lot of stuff that was going on in the East, and over here everybody playing really physical and hard and not trying to hurt anybody, so it was a nice game for us. It was a huge win for us. Carl, you said that this was the game of your career, but it was a tough week for you. You had struggled offensively. You had a public feud with the owner of the team. How did you put all that aside and come out and dominate the way you wanted to? Well... I've had a lot of things happen to me in my life, and I've always been able to believe in God and bounce back. And my, my family, my mom, my wife, and kids, everybody been real supportive. And it's going to take a hell of a lot more than that to upset me when I know what I want in life. But I just want to thank God for giving me the strength to go out and play hard. And it was a humongous win for us. I'm just excited. Not too much time to stay excited, though, because coming up, you've got Akeem Olajuwon and the Houston Rockets. You've already faced a dominant shot-blocking force in Dikembe Mutombo. Will that experience help you? Well, it will definitely help me. Uh, we don't have long to celebrate. Houston's going to be ready for us. But the main thing is we're going to the conference final, something we haven't did in a while. They're going to be ready for us. But the main thing is for us to keep our composure. And we got new life. So hopefully we can go in there and get the job done. But it's a huge win for us. Going to the conference final for the second time in your nine years here. Congratulations, Thank Carl. You. Let's go back to Dick. Houston and Utah were three and three in the regular season. It promises to be a great Western final beginning on Monday night. NBC's game four on Sunday, and then prime time the following week if it goes on. And don't forget tomorrow, fans, the Bulls and Knicks were off in the final game seven of their series. Carl Malone says you'll have to wait your turn, Dick Embiid. It's Utah going to Houston.